Thank you. We're going to present uh, a case of a young newborn child with a vein of gallon malformation and how the technology has taken us uh, to save this child's life and eventually cure the children. Uh, this is a, a case done at the Mount Sinai Healthcare System in New York City, New York. Uh, these are some of the uh, uh, conflicts that uh, disclosures. This is a six day old baby boy born full term through a cesarean section. On day two was in severe congestive heart failure, pulmonary hypertension and an enlarged heart. A cranial ultrasound revealed a vein of gallon malformation. An immediate postnatal MR imaging of the brain T2 weighted images demonstrate both in the axial and coronal projections a typical image of a vein of gallon aneurysmal malformation in the midline with prominent feeding vessels representing a choroidal type. Whenever we do the immediate postnatal MR imaging, it is important to look that the brain is normal uh, as this will have predicting uh, value. The brain is very normal. The baby is now transferred to the Mount Sinai healthcare system uh, and in our neonatal intensive care unit, we were able to cannulate the two umbilical arteries and the umbilical vein. And this is the access to this baby body. And this is a technique developed at the Mount Sinai Healthcare System uh, in which we use the umbilical artery as a means to reach the brain. And what you're seeing now is the use of a nitinol guide wire placed in the uh, arterial line for an exchange. And now uh, we hold with our hands the uh, umbilical cord and are now advancing uh, the guide wire and bringing the catheter out to exchange it for an introducer sheath, which can permit us to get into the descending aorta. And through that, we now have access uh, to the arterial system. This is the setup in which a four French introducer sheath is placed in suture in the umbilical cord, and it gives us access so that multiple catheters can be introduced, and if there is any obstruction of the catheter, we can easily change it. In addition, we can keep the umbilical access for up to five to seven days. Here is the control angiogram of the left vertebral artery in frontal and lateral projection that demonstrate a typical choroidal type vein of gallon malformation. In the newborn period, these children are very sick, are in severe heart failure, so a full angiogram is not done as we do have the MR imaging, which is excellent. So we know that the major fistulas are coming from the right posterior cerebral artery. So we're going to try to close this in the early phase during this newborn period. And here is a microcatheter advanced from into the posterior cerebral artery. And here is that fistula seen in the frontal and lateral projection. These are the same images. And here is the video of the liquid embolic injection of 90% cyanoacrylate mixed with tantalum powder. And you can see how the flow is quite strong and you can see how the filling of the fistula, this is the arterial pedicle. And now you see the glue entering to the venous side, which is an expansion in the diameter. We take then the catheter out. Looking at the lateral view, you can see the nearly pure glue, and here is the fistula itside, itself, and this is the removal of the catheter. Another fistula in the same procedure. Here we have the catheter in the AP, and here is the glue injection in the AP with sealing of the pedicle and closing the fistula itself. We'll see that this is the lateral angiogram, and we're gonna see that now in the lateral uh, video. This is the injection of the new cyanoacrylate, again, 90%, and it's entering, it's closing the fistula, and now we will seal off and close the pedicle. This is a third fistula done during the same period, and here is the injection of the cyanoacrylate. This is on your left, the control angiogram in AP and lateral, and here is the injection of the glue in the lateral projection. So this is the third 
cyanoacrylate injection that day. And you can see how the previous glue helped us to retain the cyanoacrylate. Small amount is in the vein, but it's uh, not, not significant. Now, this is the angiogram after that session. You can see on the left side, the major fistulas have been uh, occluded. Of course, there are still a significant flow, but this was necessary uh, to decrease the flow and take the child out of heart failure. This is now at a second day, it's also transumbilical, where we are advancing another microcatheter into another fistula. And here you see again, the liquid embolic injection. And you can see that actually we're closing more than one uh, fistula uh, at this uh, location. And we'll see it also in the large projection. Here's arterial to arterial anastomosis. So we were able to close a number of fistulas in that uh, uh, case. And here is seen in the lateral projection, you can see that there's one fistula anteriorly, one is inferiorly, the vein is in this area and this area. So that permit us to additional close uh, malformation. And again, you saw, you see now the decrease in the flow uh, to this malformation. Now, several years later, uh, the child came in for additional treatment. And now we're going to go to the anterior cerebral artery. And here is the catheterization with a J guide wire. You can see how we advance into the anterior cerebral artery. Here is in the lateral projection. We use a J wire to be as atraumatic as possible. And we cannulate the anterior cerebral artery on the right. And now we advance all the way, all the way until the side of the fistulization. Here is a detachable tip microcatheter. You see two tip marker. This is the angiogram. This is the injection of the cyanoacrylate in the frontal, and this is in the lateral projection. Here comes the glue. Again, you see the artery to vein fistula. It's a perfect demonstration. And now in this type of catheters, we can actually bring the glue to this area and the catheter will be detached at this tip. So we're showing you as the progression of the treatment, also the progression in, in the technology. As we continue the treatment, the child started on uh, developing choroidal supply. And here is the microcatheter, again, two tips marker, turning all the way into the um, anterior choroidal artery. Here is the angiogram. Uh, the position is a little too deep. We bring the tip of the catheter slightly back. And now we do an angiogram again, and we can see a much better position. This is the angiogram, and this is the actual injection of the glue material, as you can see, as it enters uh, into uh, the malformation. Again, we have a two catheter tip. So we're going to detach the tip of the catheter. And here is another injection. And you can see again, the frontal, and this is the lateral injection. And again, we go from artery to vein. So there's been a number of additional procedures and additional injections, another glue injection. On your left, you will have the baseline angiogram. On your right, the video and the detachment of the tip of the catheter uh, seen uh, after the injection of the cyanoacrylate. Uh, so that we are seeing how we are progressively obliterating the malformation over a number of procedures in years. Here is a control angiogram where you can see it is shrunken down, but there is still residual supply. We, we now have uh, the catheterization of another uh, session uh, in which we let things mature. And we're now going to come in the center of where the fistulas are. And again, uh, this looks more like a malformation. And you can see the penetration of the cyanoacrylate. The child now, as the child becomes four years of age, uh, starts on having dural supply, parasitation of dural supply coming into the midline. And here we're using another technique, which is the technique of advancement of a balloon tip catheter to permit us to inject uh, another liquid embolic agent. And you can see here uh, the injection of the anterior cerebral artery residual fistula with excellent penetration and excellent occlusion. And you can see how controlled the injection can be done uh, when you have uh, control over the flow. 
And again, you see the fistula site uh, excellently demonstrated in this video. And now we're going to detach that tip catheter. You can see we gently advance and you can see how it's detached. Look at the lateral. That is the detachment of the tip in this new type of technology, benefiting the treatment of this child. And here is the dural contribution. This is the middle meningeal artery on the left in the frontal and lateral projections. And we're gonna navigate all the way here using a mini balloon catheter uh, which has two lumens. Uh, you see here the uh, catheterization uh, in the frontal and lateral projection. Here is the microcatheter, and we see all the way, this is the two tips of the balloon, and this is the tip of the catheter. And with this technology, we now can reach the dural supply. This is the contrast injection. This is actually the liquid embolic. The liquid embolic here is now a DMSO base called Onyx. And what we do with this, this DMSO base is we can continue the injection, continue the injection until we reach the venous fistula. Additional injection with the same catheter, same balloon. This technique permits you to continuously inject, progressively occluding the malformation. And this is the result of the angiogram where you can see that we have completely eliminated the dural contribution to the malformation. This is now at the age of six years, the child comes in and you can see there is still a residual malformation, but the venous system has gotten a lot smaller. In addition to that, we can see that there are perforating arteries that come in to the area where the vena gallen was and this is a very dangerous territory. This is called a transmesencephalic. So you have the, the uh, midbrain is in this area. So injection of any liquid embolic can be very dangerous. So what we're gonna do now is use another technique, which is a transvenous approach. And we're gonna come from the jugular vein and come up through the sigmoid sinus, come into the confluent sinus, catheterize, there's a stenosis here, but we're gonna try to get in all the way inside the vein with two separate catheters. Here is the video of the triaxial. That means one catheter at the jugular vein, another bigger catheter in the uh, sigmoid sinus. And now we come in with a five French Berenstein coming in uh, to the straight sinus. There it is, the straight sinus. And then using a guide wire, there is some glue here. Uh, and we are, have to find the channel to be able to reach the deep part of the vein. So here we have the guide wire looking for that space. There it is, we're able to penetrate. And now we advance the five French catheter and now we're gonna advance the eight French, which is a much larger bore catheter. You can see it turning here. And this catheter will give us access so that we can put more than one catheter to treat the malformation. Now we're gonna be injecting against the flow. So now what we're gonna do is put a set of catheters. Here is another detachable tip catheter. Here is the guide wire in lateral projection. And now we're gonna advance. This is the detaching tip. So we're gonna put this catheter as deep as we can right here. And here is the position. Here is the three centimeters that we have to navigate. And here comes a second detachable tip catheter that we're gonna put in between those two in this location. So here's coming with a micro wire. We are again looking for the channel. And once we find the channel, we advance the guide wire. And here comes the second micro catheter. You see the tip, the two tip marker. And we're gonna put this in the middle of those two. And this is to do a thing called a pressure cooker technique described by Dr. Chapeau. And what we're gonna do is put some coils first here, and then we're gonna put some glue. So now once we close that here uh, in this segment, we can then inject liquid embolic through the distal tip of the first catheter. And once we're done, we will separate it by detaching it here. 
and detaching uh, both catheters. Now, uh, here we have the lateral view. We're going to put cyanoacrylate to seal and prevent the liquid embolic to come backwards. So here is the NBCA. It is placed to close that segment. And then we detach the second catheter and we still have access to be able to inject at this location. So this is what's called the pressure cooker uh, technique because it prevents uh, backward uh, migration of the liquid embolic. And now we're gonna show you how we inject the liquid embolic and we're going to feel those, look at these perforators, but we're feeling them retrograde against the flow. So here is one and here is a second one. And we inject the uh, onyx material, DMSO base. And as we start injecting, we can see another of the perforating vessels that comes back to its origin. So here is where it came in uh, to the uh, malformation. Uh, now we're going to detach that original catheter. Uh, and you can see how we're pulling. And there comes the catheter. So once it's detached, we now can do a control angiogram and see the total complete elimination of the malformation. And look at the perforator arteries. You will see how they are stagnant as they can't go to the malformation. So this permit a complete cure of this child. The child at the age of seven uh, is neurologically normal and benefited from 16 separate procedures from the newborn period to the age of six uh, years of age. Uh, and it shows the gamut of how we have evolved in the technology of treating this most difficult uh, type of cases. Thank you very much for your attention. And uh, we are available at Mount Sinai to help all children with vascular malformation. I wanna thank uh, Joanna Fifi uh, and Tomoyoshi Shigamatsu, my partners, and Michelle Sorcher and Evelyn Deer, uh, which is the fabulous team that we have to treat these children. Thank you.